This is Orson Welles, speaking from London. A repository of death. Here in the grim stone structure on the Thames which houses Scotland Yard is a warehouse of homicide. Where everyday objects, a pin, a garden hose, a handbag, all are touched by murder. Here's a car tire. There were three others, all attached to a sedan. They were removed. Great Scott, Inspector. Uh, those vandals, they, they've stripped the car of everything. Even the four tires, sir. There's nothing left except evidence. Now, today, one of those tires, the one that became a vital clue in the case, can be seen in the Black Museum. <laughs> the annals of the Criminal Investigation Department of the London Police, we bring you the dramatic stories of the crimes recorded by the objects in Scotland Yard's Gallery of Death, the Black Museum. Well, here we are. Black Museum. Scotland Yard's Museum of Murder. And here lies death. On the shelves, around the walls, death in many disguises. Here's a length of electric wiring. The protective insulation has been stripped away. The man touched it. He died. The jury found it was murder. Here's a card. Invitation to a party. The invitation was accepted. Death was the end of that. Right, here's the tire. It's an ordinary car tire. Once it belonged to a sedan that stood in a garage at South End. On a certain night some years ago, two men entered the garage quietly after first forcing the lock. There we are, Ted. Good work, Harry. Look at her. Ben spoking you. And she's ours once we get her out of the garage. Ah, uh, quietly does it. I'll take up the brake. Right. We'll push her out in the street and down the road a bit. Okay, I'm ready. The object of this stealthy midnight visit was a new car. The two men pushed the automobile down the slope of the road, jumping in when the car began to gather speed. All right, Harry. Get in. Oh, nice going. Get us started, Ted. Right. Down behind us. We got away with it. Oh, it was easy. By morning, we'll have everything we want off this car. Tires, spare parts, the seat. And then we'll ditch what's left, eh? We'll make our fortune this way, Harry, my boy. Sounds easy money. It is. Come on, I'll show you what this car can do. Flat out! A car travelling fast along the road to Eastwood. It's twin lights cutting beams in the darkness of the night. And a policeman cycling homeward. Hello? What's that up there, eh? What? A man in the center of the road. Oh, wait till our lights pick him up clearly. It's a... it's a cop. Oh? And he's got his hand up signaling us to stop. Say, you don't think... What, the word's got out this car's been pinched? Not a chance. Then what's this copper doing? Oh, might want to lift down, you never know. There's his bike at the side of the road. Ted, I don't like Take this. Take it easy, will you? We'll bluff our way out. If he makes trouble, I can handle him. Well, go easy on using that gun. Leave it to me. Good evening, Constable. Anything the matter? I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll have to ask you not to speed like that along this road, sir. Were we speeding? Well, I, I think you know you were, sir, you know. 
There's been a number of serious accidents around here lately. Oh, dear. Now, may I see your license? My... my license? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, funny thing, I'm afraid I don't have it on me, Constable. Then I'll have to request some other means of identification, sir. Well, I... Uh, you know, I haven't anything on me at all. Well, where are you going, sir, and uh, where have you come from? Well, we... Uh, oh, we're just driving. Hmm. Is the car yours? No, Constable. The car belongs to me. Oh, I see, sir. Then, uh, would you tell me its number? It's on the front of the car, if you want to see it. I know the number, but do you? Well, well no, not offhand. As I thought, sir. This is a stolen car. Stolen? You, you'd both better get out. Now, come on. I'll have to take down some particulars. Yeah, yeah. What makes you think you can order us around, eh? Get yeah. out, I said. Come on. I want your name. And put that gun away. Say your prayers, copper. Give me that gun. Don't let him take it, Ted. Ted! Yeah. I won't, don't worry. You ask for trouble, copper, you're going to get it. You <laughs> die! drives away. A man lies dead on the roadway. A murder has been committed. Murder of a policeman. Lovely morning, George. You wouldn't think it to read a morning paper, Tom. Nothing in it but crime. Ah, uh, you won't find much crime round these parts. <laughs> Here. What's the matter with your dog? Oh, he seems to have found something ahead there. Well, it's not like him to get that excited. What's the matter with him? Here, yeah, wait a minute, George. Huh? Unless I'm mistaken, it ain't only in the morning papers you'll find crime. What do you mean? Well, ahead there. Yeah? Over by the side of the road. It looks like a man. So it does. Does. Come on. Hey. Why? It's Charlie Acker. <laughs> He's dead. Dead. By morning, Scotland Yard was represented the scene of the crime by Inspector Clancy and Detective Sergeant Redding. He was shot three times, Redding. Nasty business, sir. Oh, here's a notebook lying on the ground beside him. Yes, and he was holding a pencil in his right hand. Oh, well, that seems fairly straightforward, sir. He was about to take down some particulars from a person or persons whom he'd met. Uh, the evidence suggests that, Sergeant. But wait a minute, Inspector. His torch is here in his pocket. Is it? And there's no street lighting nearby. How could he have been writing? Mm, by the light of a vehicle, presumably. Of course, sir. Either the headlights or the interior lighting of a car or a truck. More likely the interior lighting, don't you think, Inspector? Well, we'll work on that assumption first. Which means it was a car. Uh, yeah, there are some tracks here. You can see the skid marks. Now, they might be caused by a car starting fairly fast. I want those tracks photographed. The photographs were duly sent to certain experts at Scotland Yard, and a report came back to Inspector Clancy. Report from the yard, sir. Yes, Sergeant Redding? Those tracks were made by an Evans car. An Evans, eh? Get a full list of all stolen cars within a 50-mile radius. We'll see if there was an Evans amongst them. There were two. One was found. Inspector Clancy interviewed the owner of the other. Yes, it was uh, taken the night before last, Inspector. Uh, some bounder picked the lock of my garage and got away with the car. I'll get a full description from you, sir. Uh, certainly, uh, but uh, I say, I say, uh, Scotland Yard doesn't usually go chasing stolen cars, does it? Not usually, eh, Colonel Fentress? Oh, uh, there's something else behind it, is there? Oh, excuse me a moment. Uh, hello, hello, uh, Fentress speaking. Uh, oh, yes, 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 uh, just a moment. Uh, it's for you, Inspector. Thank you, sir. Hello? Yes, Redding? At Rayleigh. I see. Yes, yes, I'll come down right away. Oh, um, um, uh, something happened, Inspector? An Evans car's been found, sir, abandoned in a ditch outside Rayleigh. 
A new Evans. Index mark TW6120. Uh, uh, but, but, but that's mine, Major. Then you'd better come along, sir. They found the car, the police going over it for fingerprints. Curious crowd gathered around it. It was a vastly different car from the one Colonel Fentress had locked in his garage two nights earlier. Great Scott, Inspector, those vandals, they've stripped the car of everything. Even the four tires. Sir. There, there, there's nothing left. Except evidence. Hey, what do you mean, Inspector? This was the car concerned in the murder of Constable Hacker on Eastwood Road. Uh, my car? <laughs> Concerned in that killing. Come with me, Colonel. I'll show you the evidence to prove it. That car is the first link in a long chain at the end of which is the murderer. And a further link is the missing four tires, one of which became the vital clue in the case. That tire can be seen today in the Black Museum. A car was found, abandoned in a ditch outside Rayleigh. You can see for yourself, Colonel Fentress, on the running board. Uh, a dark stain there. It's blood? Yes, it's blood. And see this? Eh. Uh, Oh, a spent cartridge case. It was found on the floor of the car. Then my car was concerned in that poor fellow's murder? We'll make confirmatory tests, of course. The blood stain will be checked against the constable's grouping and the cartridge case will go to ballistics. Well, these routine checks must be carried out. But Colonel Fentress knew and Inspector Clancy knew that the driver of the stolen car had taken part in the policeman's murder. And knowing this... The inspector was able to reconstruct the crime. We don't know why Constable Hacker pulled the car up, Sergeant. He was cycling home. Perhaps the Evans car was speeding. Well, whatever the reason, he called on it to halt. And in the process of questioning, he came to realize the car was stolen. He'd have brought out his notebook and pencil to take down some particulars, sir. And for doing that, he was killed. The picture of the crime was clear, but now, how to find the driver of the car? Nothing was known about him. There were no eyewitnesses. One man had seen the driver, and he was dead. Why would they begin searching? We'll begin right here at the car, Sergeant. It, it's funny about those tires, sir. Very funny. But not only the tires are missing. No, the toolkit's been taken, and the jack, and most of the spare parts. The windscreen wipe has been removed, so the headlamps and the car radio Colonel Fentress had installed. Vandalism, sir? Well, if it was vandalism, it was well planned, Sergeant. Yeah. Now, there are lorry tracks over there. The stuff was loaded on and driven away. Car stealing, sir, for spare parts and tires. A very profitable pastime. Now, what was taken out of this car would probably be worth from two, three hundred pounds on the second-hand market. Black market, sir, for the tires. I wonder who handles second-hand parts and tires around this district. Come on. Where to, Inspector? The nearest garage. They found a garage less than half a mile away. The proprietor, reassured that he was not under suspicion, proved to be helpful. Spare parts and tires. Quite a few places around here who handles them, Inspector. Uh, could you list them for us, sir? Certainly. Come into the office. There were six names on that list. Six visits to make. Sergeant Redding made them, posing as a driver in search of new tires. Oh, good morning. I need four new tires for an Evans car... Can you help me out? Williams and Sons were sorry. They hadn't had any tires to sell for months past. Field and Company said the same thing. So did Hammond and Barden, Kennedy and Sons. Then Sergeant Redding paid his last visit. The sixth name on the list. A 
small motor workshop on the road out of Eastwood. A car was being overhauled by a mechanic. A lorry stood on a vacant block of land beside the workshop. A sign at the front of the building said, Randolph and Burns, motor engineers and spare parts. Yes, sir? Oh, I need four new tires for an Evans car. Can you help me out? An Evans? Do you own an Evans car? Oh, not me, chum, no. no. It's for the governor. I've been everywhere trying to get these tyres. Well, you know, I might be able to set you up. Of course, they're in short supply. We'll pay whatever you ask for them. OK. Hey, hey. Oh, Jack. Here a minute, will you? What is it? Fellow here wants to buy some Evans tyres. Huh? Chauffeur, aren't you, mate? Yeah, that's right. Well, you can set him up, can't we? No, we can't. But Ted, he'll pay the right I price. tell you, we can't. We can't set him. Now, can we, when we haven't seen an Evans tire in months? But Ted... People just don't bring us second-hand tires anymore, mister. Sorry. Sergeant went out, went back to where Inspector Clancy was waiting for his report. Something he'd seen deep in the eyes of the man called Ted told him the search was at an end. I don't know what spoiled it, Inspector. Perhaps he recognized me. Perhaps he was just being cautious. You say the other man was ready to sell you the tires? Ready and willing, sir. I think they're the ones we want. I'm almost sure of it. All right, we'll make some further inquiries about them both. Uh, first of all, their uh, business registration. We'll get their full names from that. The business records office holds many secrets. The directors of England's leading companies, the balance of power and mighty industrial concerns. It also lists the many thousands of small businesses, companies, partnerships, sole traders, their trade and management personnel. Uh, here we are, Sergeant. Randolph and Burns, motor engineers, Eastwood. Partners Edward Burns. Well, that'll be your friend Ted. And Harold Randolph, probably the other man I spoke to. Well, take a note of their names. We'll see if the method index section knows them. The method index section at Scotland Yard. That's a vast room of records. The walls are lined solidly with filing cabinets. Here are the details of all the crimes, from murder to petty theft. Here are the names and the aliases of all the criminals ever convicted in any English court. Filed and cross-filed for easy checking. Uh, those two men you asked me to check, Inspector Clancy. Find anything on them, Severs? There's no record for Harold Randolph. What about the other one? Burns, yes, we know him. Ted Burns, motor mechanic, four convictions. The first uh, from my hometown, funnily enough, Oxford City Police Court. The charge? Uh, stealing a motor car. And what were the other three charges, Evers? All connected with motor theft, sir. Uh -huh. uh, one was for removing spare parts from parked vehicles. Another time he was convicted for selling a stolen car. That's all I want. Very Thank you, Evers. Inspector Clancy and Sergeant Redding drove back to Eastwood. On the road there, about 50 yards from the motor workshop, they waited. They saw two mechanics leave at 5.30 on their way home. Then, a few minutes later... There he is, Inspector. That's Harry Randolph. And he's alone. It was a very peaceful scene. The casual passerby would have noticed a dark sedan slowing down beside a thick-set man in overall. Mr. Randolph? Yeah? Oh, it's you. Still after them tires, eh? In a manner of speaking, sir, this is Inspector Clancy from Scotland Yard. Scotland Yard? Get in, Mr. Randolph. No, not me, Inspector. Now, you've got nothing against me. On the contrary, we have a great deal against you. Get in.
Randolph was defiant at first, but when the advantages of turning King's evidence were pointed out to him, he became almost verbose. It wasn't me who thought of the scheme. I, I was talked into it by him. The scheme being to steal cars, sell their spare parts and tires, and abandon them? Yeah. Ted said we couldn't get enough parts and tires to stay in business otherwise. He talked me into helping him to pinch the Evans. Well, go on. Well, everything was sweet, and then on the way back to Eastwood, the cop signals us to stop. Tells us we were speeding. He'd have got our names and all. So you shot him dead? I, I, I didn't do it. Ted shot him. The gun's hidden in the desk, down at our works. His fingerprints will be on it. I told him not to shoot. He, he wouldn't listen. We took the lorry down and got everything we could from the car and brought it back. And where is that stuff now? Well, some of it we sold and three of the tires went off late the day. I would have sold a lot of the copper here, but Ted was wise to him. He, he can smell coppers. Three were sold. Then one tire is left on the premises? Yeah. But listen, won't you? I, I, I might have helped to pinch the car, but I'd nothing to do with the murder. Ted did that. He shot a copper. <laughs> A report on the tyre we found on the premises, sir. It comes from an Evans car, all right, and matches the tracks near Constable Hacker's body. Then our case is complete, Sergeant. The gun was found, the fingerprints on the wheel rims belong to Randolph and Burns, and now the tyre. All right, Randolph, you've one more chance to help us. Where's Burns? Oh. Come on, you must have some idea. Right. But you've got to look after me. I'm not promising anything. Where's Burns? He's trying to get away overseas. I, I, I think he was heading for Liverpool. He was always talking about a pal of his who was a ship's mate. Can you remember the name of the ship? Oh, I, I, I think it was called the Briar Rose. <laughs> I have reason to believe your name is Ted Burns. Ted what? <laughs> you got the wrong man, Sam. I don't think so, Mr. Burns. I have here a warrant for your arrest on a charge of murder. Hey, you got nothing on me? You got no evidence? Oh, yes, we have, Mr. Burns. All the evidence we need. And today that tire occupies a place in the Black Museum. Orson Welles will be back with you in just a moment. The murder of Constable Hacker on the lonely Eastwood Road was solved by the patient methods of Scotland Yard and by the talking of Harry Randolph, whose verbosity put him behind bars for many years to come and brought his unholy friend Ted Burns to the last walk and the end of a rope one morning at 8 o'clock. A crook's plan misfired into murder. And neither Burns nor Randolph had the talent for outwitting the men of the yard. So it was that another chapter of murder was closed. Another record added to the method index section. And another exhibit, the car tire, was added to the Black Museum. And now until we meet next time in the same place and I tell you another story about the Black Museum. I remain as always obediently yours.